Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about a question that we hear really quite often. So the northern suburbs of Indianapolis, they are extremely popular. When people are searching for places to live around this area, those suburbs like Westfield, Carmel, Fishers, Noblesville, Zionsville, they come up quite often. So people want to know, how do I know which one is right for me? And how do I get to know each of those suburbs? So in this video, we're gonna talk about maybe an agenda or an itinerary that you can set. So you can come into town and visit each one of those suburbs and get a feel for them and decide if one of them is right for you or maybe the opposite and it isn't right for you so stay tuned hey everybody i'm jason compton with the compton home group welcome back to the channel if this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living in indianapolis or any of the western suburbs, the northern suburbs, east side, south side, anywhere in the Indy metro area, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and tap the little bell so you're notified every time we do a new video. Now we get reach outs from people all over the country with questions about Indianapolis, the northern suburbs, the western suburbs, the south side, the east side, all over the Indy metro. So if you have questions at all about anywhere, in the Indy Metro, then make sure that you reach out any way that you know how. We'll always have your back with those questions, and we'll certainly have your back when it comes time for your move to the Indy Metro. So this video is gonna cover really what a person might want to think about if they are thinking about moving to the Indianapolis Metro, specifically Zionsville, Carmel, Fishers, Noblesville, and Westfield, which are incredibly popular cities or towns across the north side of Indianapolis. Now there are others as well. So we get out on the west side and you get Brownsburg, Avon, Plainfield, fantastic places without a doubt. And then on the south side you have Greenwood and then some smaller areas surrounding that too. And then you can even have some places out on the east side as well. But this video here is gonna focus just specifically on those northern suburbs, the towns and the cities. So Zionsville, Carmel, Fishers, Westfield, Noblesville. And when people are searching the Indy Metro, they know that those are highly rated places and really popular places, but how do they know if it's right for them? For one, they're all pretty different sizes. Carmel and Fishers, they're both much bigger than what a lot of people think. Carmel's a little over 100,000 people. Fishers is pretty much right at that, just under 100,000. And then Noblesville and Westfield are in between, where Noblesville's a little over 60,000 people. Westfield's a little over 40,000 people, and then Zionsville's the smallest at just under 30,000. So they can have some real different feels. And so when people are coming to town and they try to pick a place to buy a home, they want to make sure that it's that it's right. Now I will say just right off the top that every single one of those places are really quite nice. They do have a huge set of pros, every single one of them. And they of course have their cons as well, where something about it just doesn't match up with a person, but they're highly rated and popular because of all of the pros. So one would be that that a lot of the school systems, actually all the school systems in each of those locations, they're all highly rated. So a school system, of course, is very subjective and it's something that's personal to a family and what is a good experience for one family might not be for another. I will just say as a blanket statement, they're all highly rated. And I wouldn't say that there's a, not really a can't miss, but you know, just obviously it, it goes back into that subjective thing, but they are highly rated, they're very popular and most people have really good experiences in those schools. But outside of that, how in the world can you get to know each of those places? And so what we'll typically do with people moving into the area or thinking about moving into the area and they're doing it in six months or nine months or 12 months down the road and they wanna scout the place out a little bit, we give them just a general idea about each place. So that's what we're gonna cover here in this video. And we're gonna start over with Zionsville. So when moving to a place like Zionsville or trying to get to know a place like Zionsville, the number one place that you probably need to go just to get a feel and this is the same story really for every single one of the other places noblesville westfield carmel fishers is that you need to visit the downtown area and spend some time there and the reason i say this is because in zionsville and all of the other places this is the the cultural center for zionsville and it's different and unique when you compare it to all of the others which is kind of cool so they all have their own different personality and it's it's based a little bit on what that downtown area is like. So in downtown Zionsville, which is Main Street, it's brick. The road is actually a brick lined street, very, very old. And the feel going through Zionsville 
is super quaint, very quiet, although you'll have people on a really nice day most of the year outside walking around, going into all the different shops, the antique shops, there's a bed and breakfast in there, restaurants, there's a lot to do and a lot to just see when you're in the downtown area of Zionsville. Now it's not very big, so it's a pretty good representative of the fact that Zionsville is also not very big, but it gives you that feel for what Zionsville is like. Now you can go off of Main Street and you can get into Lions Park, which is a fantastic community park with baseball fields and plenty of things to do out there for the family. And it's bustling during the spring, the summer, and the fall with sports and just people all around. But when you get off of that into some of the neighborhoods, you can get into some of the historic parts of Zionsville. So you're getting into houses that are more than 100 years old. Some of course require some work and some are kind of held in that particular age that the architecture, the feel of it being that particular old, the history is being preserved. But then you get some others that are extremely contemporary, extremely modern and brand new builds in that area as well where an old home has been torn down and all extremely walkable. But outside of that, you can get into some really, really nice neighborhoods that range in ages. But once you get outside of that downtown area, it starts to get newer. And Zionsville happens to be the most expensive suburb to live in on average compared to every other place. So when you get outside of that, some of those newer homes, when I say newer, they could have been built in the 90s, maybe 2000, somewhere in that range. So that's newer compared to 100 years old, but they're all gonna be really, for the most part, phenomenal homes. And Zionsville with that small, quaint, quiet downtown area, area, that's kind of the way Zionsville is. It's geographically isolated just a little bit and you have to sometimes to get from one side of Zionsville to the other wind around some different roads. Got some direct passageways but not a ton like you would over in Carmel and Fishers or even in Indianapolis. So it provides this feeling of quiet and almost exclusivity for Zionsville and that's exactly one of the reasons why people like Zionsville so much because of that. So visit the downtown area of Zionsville, spend some time there, have lunch there, walk around and you're going to get a decent sense as to what the feel of Zionsville is really like. Next, we move over into Carmel. Now, Carmel is the biggest. It's the biggest city on the north side. We're a little over 100,000 people. And the arts and design district is without a doubt its signature. I mean, it is its cultural heart, the cultural hub. And it's a place where a lot of people in Carmel go, but also people who live outside of Carmel. And they'll travel to the arts and design district because of all everything that it has to offer. In the arts and design district, the downtown area or the midtown area as well, that's also part of that downtown feel and, and arts and design district. It is large very, very big. And it's extremely pedestrian friendly. The, the Monon Trail actually goes down right through the Arts and Design District. So it has people that come up from Indianapolis on the Monon riding their bikes or running or walking. And then also down from Westfield in the north down into that particular area because there is just so much to do. You have plenty to see. There's public art all around. The buildings themselves, for the most part, places like the Palladium. When you get into places like the Booth Tarkington Civic Theater, just the structures, the buildings are are very, very fancy, architecturally significant, and everything there just looks very, very nice. Now you can also get into some places in that particular area of Carmel that are ultra contemporary, ultra modern, but a lot of the arts and design district is focused a little bit more on the aesthetics and being a place that fits more eyes than a specific subset of people who like a one particular style. It covers more and it's very grand, it's very big and it's done that way on purpose. So when you go into that arts and design district, it can give you a pretty good sense of what Carmel is like. It's busier, it's definitely a place that people go and visit and want things to do and will find things to do for themselves individually or find things as a couple or find things as a family. There is a lot going on there. And Carmel itself is not like Zionsville in that it's not noisy, but it's definitely busier. You have more people, it's a little denser. Of course, you're probably gonna have a little bit more traffic, although the traffic is not all that bad in Carmel, especially with the infrastructure that they have in Carmel. It's, it's really quite fantastic. Roads are really nice. There's tons of roundabouts, so you don't hit a lot of traffic jams or anything like that, even in the morning or in the evening during the rush hour times. But when you get into the different parts of Carmel, you're gonna have different feels. And I've done a video before just about East Carmel versus West Carmel and how they're very different from one another in their looks. And that's for the most part because of their age. East Carmel is much older for the most part, so it seems more mature. There are more mature trees and it's gonna have that more mature feel like it's been there a long time. You get over into West Carmel and it's much drive through those neighborhoods. You can just tell that a lot of those homes are certainly under 20 years old and a lot are even under five years old. So very, very new over there. 
And when you get into that arts and design district, it's kind of a mix between the two. And it gives you a great feel as just to what you will encounter once you are living in Carmel, Indiana. Now we move further east into Fishers. Fishers is a place that has just exploded in growth over the past 20 years. And the downtown area is a place that they've really recently developed. It's really been in the past five to six years or so where the development and the changes in the downtown area really taken off. So Fishers was exploding and getting so much bigger so fast that it was becoming kind of like a typical suburb where you get that suburban sprawl and it's just houses after houses after houses, neighborhood after neighborhood, maybe a grocery store, some shops here and there, but it was kind of strip malls and nothing terribly exciting. So the Fishers just decided that, hey, we've got to do something with our downtown area. We've got to bring people back in and give this place a cultural heart. So they've been doing a great job with that. Now it has a totally different feel than what you have in the Arts and Design District. The Arts and Design District is quite large, but everything can feel very compact in there. It has that sense, even though geographically it's quite large and there's a lot going on in there. Fishers, it feels a little bit more spread out. In fact, the true downtown part of Fishers is on the west side of I-69 on 116th Street, and it has some things, some attractions. They'll have their farmer's market there during the summer, the spring, summer, and fall. There's a couple of restaurants and a pretty awesome brewery in there in Fort A. Ray and a few other things surrounding that, but really the signature thing in that downtown part of Fishers is the Nickel Plate District and the Nickel Plate Amphitheater. The amphitheater there, it blows every other cities away. Harmel has a place where they have live music. Westfield, Noblesville, they all do. But this one is state of the art. It's ultra futuristic and it is a phenomenal place to see a concert. Now they have shows going on really throughout the entire summer, a lot of days during the week. And just about all of them are extremely family friendly. So on a Tuesday night when they have some of the cover bands that come in and just play some, some music for a couple of hours, you will see thousands of people there with their kids, with wagons and chairs and blankets all out on the grass, which is really where you, know, where you can sit and it's arranged perfectly so you can actually do that with sidewalks going all around it and, and easy passageways to get from one side of the amphitheater and the seating to another. It's awesome. It is absolutely a super fun thing to do. And like I said, it blows away everybody else's. Everybody else's is still fantastic and great. It's just a notch up. There's no doubt about that. So when you get into that part of Fishers, it's different than the east side of 69 where the top off in the Ikea are and the yard at Fisher's District, which is really where most of the restaurants are located in Fisher's. And this is where some of the more unique places are, some of the signature places, some of the places that people want to go. And so Fisher's is becoming a little bit more of a destination for people outside of the city because of this too. Now the disadvantage is that they're separated and you have I-69 that runs right in between them. So walking from one to the other or even riding your bike, that's not likely to happen. That's probably gonna happen much more so over in the Arts and Design District, without a doubt. You can actually park and then just walk all over the place. Not as good there in Fishers. But when you're in that Fishers area, it gives you a sense as to what Fishers is like. Fishers is extremely family friendly and they've got their eyes on the future, without a doubt. But architecturally, it looks different than what you have over in Carmel. It's a little bit more contemporary, a little bit more of a modern feel. And that's just how Fishers feel in many parts, how it is, at least how the future is shaping up for Fishers. You can of course get into Fishers and find homes that are relatively old, built in the 60s, 70s, 80s, especially near that downtown area. Some of the, the least expensive homes in all of Fishers are actually, strangely enough, right in that downtown area. It's just that they happen to be some of the more original homes and much much smaller homes and you can get in there rarely in the 200s those homes move very very fast they're extremely popular but once you get outside of that a lot of homes and fishers are built in the 90s or around 2000 and into the 2000s but they are really nice places really nice neighborhoods but you can get a sense for fishers as really in that downtown area being very forward thinking very forward looking and also relatively new. And when you go a little bit north of that, you get into Noblesville. Noblesville is certainly different than the others. And they've got a little bit more of the thinking like Zionsville does. So you get into the downtown part of Noblesville and it's just one of those old squares, old downtown squares with the old courthouse in the center and then restaurants and shops, little unique places surrounding it. They have held on to that because of the historical significance of it. There's a lot of history in Noblesville and also just that architectural significance. It is a really, really cool place, but also really, really different. You can pretty easily find a parking spot there most of the time and go and just walk around to some of the shops, a couple antique shops, maybe a restaurant, 
and just spend a little bit of time. But it feels a lot more laid back most often than what you have over in downtown Fishers or in the Arts and Design District, where those can just be absolutely bustling and super busy and just very, very happening. In Noblesville, while you'll have people walking around, you certainly have traffic that goes through there. That's probably the one disadvantage of the downtown area is that State Road 32 goes right through that downtown portion from east to west and west to east. And it does bring a significant amount of traffic through there. But outside of that, in people walking around and just relaxing and doing a little bit of shopping or eating, it's pretty laid back. And Noblesville just has that feel for the most part. Now there's some big things that happen in Noblesville. It has the biggest concert venue in the entire area outside of Banker's Life Fieldhouse and Lucas Oil Stadium downtown. It has Ruoff Home Mortgage Music Center and that thing holds close to 30,000 people. So that's right in Noblesville. It has Hamilton Town Center, which is the biggest outdoor mall in the Indy Metro, or at least one of the biggest. I don't know for sure if it is the biggest, but it is, it's quite large. So it has that on the north side right there in Noblesville. But when you get away from those super, super busy places, the rest of Noblesville seems a little bit more quiet. So the downtown area is kind of a representative of that. And its location being to the northeast, I think is something that helps with that. It reduces the traffic in Noblesville. You don't have a lot of cars going through it like you do in Carmel. A lot of cars have to go through Carmel to get from one place to another, going to Westfield from Indy or from Westfield down to Indianapolis, or you go from Fishers over to some other place. You might have to go through Carmel. It's the same with Fishers too. So the traffic is reduced there. It's a little bit more laid back. When you get up to a place like Morse Reservoir on the north side, that is a phenomenal place. It's a lot like Geist. It's smaller, but a lot like Geist in that you have homes surrounding it. You have public access where you can get on it and boat. You can ski, jet ski, you can tube, do those things, but there aren't as many. It's definitely a place that is much more quiet and doesn't have quite the, the party atmosphere that Geist sometimes has a reputation for. So when you get into that downtown Noblesville area, I think it gives you a pretty good sense as to what you might feel like whenever you're living in Noblesville. Now our last one in Westfield, Indiana. This one is going to change quite a bit. It already is on its way as we speak in this video here, but Westfield, there's over 40,000 people there now, but there was only 9,000 or so in the year 2000. So as you might imagine, most things in Westfield are either very, very old because they were there originally when Westfield was first settled and established, or it was built sometime really past the year 2000. So a good number of homes in Westfield and a good good number of structures, a good number of just places in general are less than 20 years old. So it has an exceptionally new feel throughout most of it. And they have some really, really cool things in Westfield, places like Grand Park, that and also youth sports complex. The Colts actually have a training camp there. There's basketball there as well. Huge attraction for Westfield. And it's one of the things about Westfield that I do really like is that they have their eyes on the future. And with this explosive growth, how are they going to fund a lot of the infrastructure in just not containing, but in accommodating a lot of that growth. So they've got their eyes on the future with a place like that, which actually has thousands and thousands and thousands of visitors every single year coming to the area for different types of tournaments, different types of sports. So they have that. They have Chatham Hills Country Club, which is relatively new, just built in inside the last five or six years or so. So places like that with their, their eyes on the future and, and attracting people to it, to Westfield, because it's very clear they wanna be one of the premier places to live, not just in this area, but really all of Indiana. And they're doing a really nice job with that. So if you turn your attention to their downtown area, it's lagging a little bit behind. So extremely small, very, very small, and it didn't have, at least for quite a long time, all that much going on in there. There's a few little restaurants, a few little shops, but not a significant amount, especially for the type of growth that Westfield's actually seeing. But that is changing. It is being really completely redeveloped and becoming a much more pedestrian friendly and a being put together as a place that's attractive for people to go to and hang out or to have different events, maybe some live music, and of course more restaurants, places for people to gather in that particular area. So visiting the downtown area of Westfield right now is not gonna give you the perfect sense as to what it's like to live in Westfield or what its personality is like, but it is developing. So I think right now, if you were to go into that particular area, it might give you a sense as to what Westfield's mission really is, and that's to make 
things better. And certainly, like I said, one of the premier places or trying to become one of the premier places to live. So living in Westfield right now would be a pretty exciting time to be there because of all of those changes, those positive changes that are happening for the future. So going there, walking around, driving around just a little bit will certainly give you that sense that a change is happening and there's some really good things on the horizon for Westfield. And there's some great reasons as to why it's a very, very popular place in the Indy Metro. So there you go, there's some, just a little bit of information about how to potentially get to know some of those northern suburbs. And if you are thinking about moving to any one of those places, then make sure you reach out to us because we can absolutely help put an itinerary together for you to say, hey, this day you need to go and spend some time here, maybe eat at this particular restaurant, and then the next day go here, spend some time here, do these things, eat at this particular restaurant, just to give you a better sense as to what it's like, not necessarily every single day there, but what you might feel like when you're living there and you want things to do and you wanna know what that particular place what its personality is going to bring to you. So again, if you have questions about any of those places at all, don't hesitate to reach out any way that you know how. And until the next one, we'll see you later.